Thanks, Bao Hong. The first speaker of today's event is Dr. Hai Dong. So now he's a postdoc uh, working at the Department of the Biomedical Engineering at the Georgia Tech and the Emory University. And previously, uh, he got his PhD degree from the Peking University. That's one of the best universities in China. And he obtained his bachelor degree uh, at the University, Nanjing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics. And his research uh, interests include the, to modeling those soft tissues and study the mechanics and the fatigue problem there. So let's welcome uh, Dr. Hai Dong, give us first talk. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, your screen looks nice and your voice is also perfect. Okay. <clears throat> Great thanks to Dr. Jin Yang uh, for his uh, kind introduction. And also thank everyone for your coming today. Uh, I'm going to, uh, this talk will present a unified fiber industry model and uh, a second kind of poisson fact. Uh, the constant models are of fundamental importance for many biomedical problems. For example, in the, uh, in the rupture risk estimation of aortic aneurysm, we need the constant model to calculate the stress field. For the growth modeling of bio tissue, uh, we also need the constant model to characterize the elastic deformation of the tissue. Uh, I will briefly review several widely used hyperelastic models for bio tissue. Uh, if, you're not, if you are not familiar with the uh, hyperelastic model, uh, that's fine. You may want, you, uh, one thing you may want to know is that uh, the hyperelastic model is represented by uh, the strain energy function. Once we have the strain energy function, we can calculate the stress strain relation and uh, uh, all other things regarding the hyperelastic model based on a uh, routine procedure. Here, uh, this equation shows uh, the strain energy function of the fun model. Here, W is the strain energy and uh, uh, the parameters C uh, and uh, A1 to A6 are the material parameters. Uh, the EIG is a green string component. The form model uh, is, a, is a green string based model. It is a phenomenological and uh, it's lack of the Felix structure of the bio tissue. And moreover, it, needs, it also needs plenty of parameters. In, in the year of 2000, Hozafo and others I have developed uh, a new model based on the physical structure of the bio tissue. They consider the bio tissue as uh, a matrix uh, reinforced by fi the fibers. In this model, they, they consider there are two fiber families. For each of the fiber family, the fibers, uh, they assume the fibers are parallel from each other. For the matrix part, they just use uh, the new hooking model to describe the, uh, the, the mechanical behavior. And for each of the fiber family, they came up, uh, they came up with a, a specific strain energy function. And there is another parameter uh, in the constant model is uh, the, theta, uh, the degree between the, the two fiber families. The Hazafo 2000 model is physically based, but uh, the fiber distribution are not considered in this model. In 2006, Geyser, Ogden, and Hodafo, they, pro uh, they proposed a new model by including the fiber dispersion effect of the fiber. They introduced a parameter kappa to represent the fiber dispersion uh, in their model. Uh, in the in the Gazer-Ogden-Hadab model, they assume 
they also assume that uh, there are two fiber families. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, in many of the tissues, the, the fiber, th there can exist one fiber family. For example, the bovine pericardial tissue. And they're also possible to have two fiber families. For example, in the aortic, uh, in, in the aortic media tissue. <clears throat> there is, all, uh, for many of the tissues, the, the, for many of the tissues, mm, <clears throat> the fiber distributions uh, can, is, is also uh, unknown and unclear. Therefore, different tissues could have uh, different fiber families and uh, many uh, diff uh, distributions are unknown. Uh, there, uh, there, uh, therefore, a, a model for more generation, uh, gener general application may be necessary. That is a uh, motivation for the unified fiber distribution model. This is a brief flow chart of this study. We start from we will start from one uh, generalized drug tensor, and based on this generalized drug tensor, we uh, came up with two new stream, uh, stream parameters. Based on the two new stream parameters, we uh, composed uh, three different three energy function, and that is the three uh, three different new models, A, B, and C. And we also perform performed biaxial testing of aortic tissue and obtained the biaxial stress strain relation. Then we uh, used uh, the uh, stress strain relation <clears throat> to estimate the accuracy of the, of the new models based on the model fitting. The results show that uh, model A is uh, better than B and, that, and better than C. Moreover, the model A is even better uh, than the Jewish model. Model A is uh, with uh, four parameters and the Jewish model is with uh, five parameters. To, uh, to investigate why the different, the, the different models were, has different accuracy, we investigated the deformation coupling of the, of the tissue on the bags of tension and uh, proposed a new second kind of po uh, Poisson effect. And with this uh, new uh, Poisson effect, we explain why the model A is the best. So I will start from the generalized drug tensor. <clears throat> for for uh, uh, many of the tissue has, uh, uh, has the fibers distributed Mm, in the tissue plane. And here we consider a planar distrib uh, fiber distribution. For a general a 2D fi uh, planar fiber distribution, the general strike tensor can be defi defined in this form. Here the M is a unit vector along a specific fiber. And rho is a fiber density function. The, general, uh, the generalized drug tensor is a, is a distributed fiber represented uh, in an integral sense. If we substitute the, unit, uh, the expression of the unit vector into the expression of the drug tensor, we can obtain the drug tensor in the component form. It has three components, H11, H22, and H12, because it is symmetric, H12 uh, equals H21. We also have another condition is that it's a normalization condition of the fiber density function. Based on this uh, normalization, uh, normalization condition, we can have the H11 plus H1, H22 equals one. So the generalized drug tensor finally has uh, has two independent components, that is H11 and H12. <clears throat> uh, for, many, uh, for most of the bowel tissue, there exists a, a symmetric axis. And with this symmetric condition, 
we will have rho minus theta equals rho theta. And further, we, we will have the H12 and uh, equals H21 equals zero. Finally, we will have the uh, generalized stress tensor can be expressed in this form. It has only one parameter, theta. To illustrate the physical meaning of the parameter theta, uh, I will use several specific fiber distributions. Uh, for one fiber family, here I first con uh, con uh, consider the warm mesas distribution. If you are not familiar with the warm mesas distribution, that's fine. It is just a, a normal distribution on a circle. You can just uh, regard it as a normal distribution. There is one parameter B in the warm mesas distribution uh, represent the concentration of the fiber. This figure shows uh, the fiber density function with different values of the concentra concentration parameter. When B equals zero, it means uh, that the, all the fibers distributed evenly uh, along uh, every direction. And the fiber density function is just a constant. If B uh, with uh, the increased value of B and the, the fiber concentration will increase. For the value of B equals infinity, then it means that all the fibers is along or uh, parallel along one direction. If we substitute the expression of the one mean distribution into the uh, expression of the uh, parameter data, we can obtain the relation between the parameter data and the, uh, and the concentration parameter B. We can see that the parameter data increase uh, decrease with the increasing concentration parameter. And data here in this case, data can be regarded as a dispersion parameter. And its range is from zero to 0.5. If there is no dispersion, that means all the fibers are along one direction and that, uh, that will correspond to zeta equals zero. And in this case, the general strike tensor H reduced to this form. For the, uh, the second case I, I would like to uh, introduce is the is distribution of two fiber families. The two fiber families uh, can be uh, the fiber density function can be expressed in this form. Each uh, for the center of uh, each of the fiber family is uh, along the theta zero and the minor theta zero. This figure shows uh, the fiber density function with uh, the, the fiber density function of the two fiber families with uh, a mix of uh, the two mix of one mesas distribution. If we substitute the density function into the expression of data, here we can obtain the relation between data and the concentration pr uh, parameter B with different theta zero. For theta zero equals zero, that will correspond to corresponding, that means uh, th these two fiber family uh, will, will combine into one fiber family. And it is uh, exactly the same as the one fiber family. With the increasing of uh, theta zero, the value of theta will increase. And uh, it is uh, interesting to note that when theta zero equals 45, that means the, the, center, the center line of the two fiber family is crossed uh, uh, to each other. The, the value of data is, it becomes constant no matter what value of the concentration parameter. And when the theta is larger than 45, the, uh, the, value, of the, the value of the data will increase with the, parameter, with the concentration parameter B. And from the results of this figure, we can see that for a general case, the parameter data is neither a concentration parameter nor a dispersion parameter. The physical meaning of, of data is just uh, the average 
fiber component in the A0 perpendicular direction. Here, the A, uh, A0 direction is a mean, is the overall mean fiber direction, and uh, A0 perpendicular is uh, just across to the A0 direction. With an unknown distribution, we can also define the general, generalized drag tensor with this form. And uh, the range of the parameter data for an unknown fiber distribution is uh, uh, from zero to one. Uh, my above few, a few slides shows that the generalized drag tensor can represent arbitrary uh, fiber distributions with uh, within the, the uh, distributed within the tissue plane. And uh, uh, in my in my following development of the string energy function, I will start uh, only use uh, the expression of the generalized track tensor. First, uh, we we propose the two new string parameters based on this uh, generalized track tensor. We defined, uh, we defined the track tensor along the mean fiber direction and, uh, and uh, each parallel and another track tensor each, each perpendicular is uh, perpendicular to the mean fiber direction. And further, the, the two string parameters, E parallel and uh, E perpendicular is defined in, this, uh, in these expressions. The so H parallel double dot C and H perpendicular double dot C are the stretch like parameters. And these two are the initial values of these stretch, stretch like parameters. Their difference is just a, 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 a string characterization of the deformation. And here, data and uh, one minor data are the weight for the, the fiber contribution. For specific, specific case of the in-plane bikes of tension, we have the deformation gradient equals lambda two, lam, uh, lambda one, lambda two, and uh, one over lambda one, lambda two. Here we, we assume the, uh, the tissue is uh, in, incompressible. With this deformation, and we can uh, have the two new uh, stream parameters in this, uh, expressed in these forms. And uh, the two new uh, string parameters, E parallel and uh, E perpendicular, it just uh, characterize the deformation with the consideration of the fiber dispersion. Recall that for a hyperelastic model, what we need is a string energy function. Uh, here, we also assume that the string energy function can be expressed as a sum of the uh, matrix contribution and the fiber contribution. For the matrix contribution, here we, we just use the new key model. And for the fiber contrib contribution, we came up with the three different forms, uh, A, B, and C, based on the two string parameters, E parallel and uh, E perpendicular. Uh, these three forms are proposed by performing the square, the square sum and exponential operators in different sequence. Uh, sequence. For the A, we first, uh, uh, we first perform the square of the string parameters and then sum them and then perform the exp ex exponential. For the second, uh, for the B, uh, B string energy function, we first uh, sum them and then perform the square and uh, finally perform the exponential operation. For the, left, uh, for the last string energy function, we first uh, uh, perform the square and then perform the exponential and then sum them. All these three forms fulfill the requirement of the uh, string energy function. When there's no deformation, the string energy function equals zero and uh, all of them also fulfill the convexity condition. There is an assumption in the literature that 
the collagen fibers cannot support compression. And uh, here in our final forms of the 3 d function, we introduced the two parameters, delta parallel and delta perpendicular. These parameters are hevisive step function. When the, uh, way, when the tissue is uh, in stretch in the corresponding direction, and then the delta equals one. When it is uh, in compressed condition, the delta equals zero. The rule of the uh, two deltas is to exclude the contribution of the compressed uh, fibers in an integral sense. If we consider a specific deformation, a unexal stretch along the A0 direction, we will have uh, I fall larger than one, and I, uh, I fall perpendicular is uh, uh, less than one. In this case, all the three, all the, uh, we will have delta parallel equals one and delta perpendicular equals zero. And in this case, the three different straight any function reduce to the same form. To estimate the accuracy of the three different forms of the Sabriani function, we performed by extension testing of pulsing aortic tissue. And uh, we obtained the stress strain relation uh, with uh, seven different protocols for the normal stress P11 to P22 equals 0 0.321, 0 0.521, 0 0.75 to 1, 1 to 1. Uh, one to point, uh, point 75, one to point five, and uh, uh, one to point, uh, point three. And then we use the, uh, the three different models to fit the experimental data obtained from the back to, back to tension testing. These three figures shows the, the fitting result uh, of the stress relation in the one one direction. And here, the R square is a coefficient of the determination. It is a measure of the good, goodness of the fitting. And uh, uh, the larger value of the R square uh, means that the, uh, the fitting is better. From these three figures, we can see that the fitting of the model A is better than B and uh, better than C. The, re the fitting result in these three figures uh, for each of the model are the best fitting for, for, for each of, of, of the uh, model A, B, and B, and C. These three figures shows the fitting result in the two two direction, and it has similar results. Model A is better than B, it's better than C. So uh, we are wondering, these three, these three forms of the strain and function look similar. Why they have so, so much different accuracy? To explain uh, the different accuracy of the three different models, we uh, checked the deformation coupling of the tissue. This figure shows uh, a traditional the Poisson effect I, uh, I believe everyone in the mechanics field know the, the, Poisson, the Poisson effect. It is uh, just uh, uh, under, uh, for, for material under unexal tension. And then uh, in general, uh, for the, for the, uh, for the uh, Y direction, in, in, uh, you stretch in the X direction and uh, for, the, for the vertical direction, it will contract. And in the, in the case of the traditional Poisson effect, the stress uh, in the here, the vertical is a one one direction. The, the, the stress in the one one direction is zero with uh, uh, the, the, uh, the stretch lambda two two, sorry, it should be uh, greater than one. The deformation in the uh, one one direction, in the uh, horizontal direction is in stretch. If we, can, uh, if we consider another case, 
is that uh, when we stretch in, in the horizontal direction and uh, fix the, the, uh, the deformation in the vertical direction, and then we will have this kind of deformation. In this case, because we have uh, fixed the vertical direction and uh, it cannot contract, and that will, uh, it will generate stress in the vertical direction due to the uh, stretch in the horizontal direction. And uh, we, uh, we regard this kind of phenomena as the second kind of Poisson effect. And we can also consider another case is that uh, before we stretch in the, in the horizontal direction, we, we do a pre-stretch in the vertical direction to be lambda to be lambda one one, to set the lambda one one to be one uh, one point two, and then we stretch in the horizontal direction. In in this intermediate case, uh, we, because we have already applied a pre-stretch, then it will uh, the the stress x one one will not uh, will not equal zero, in this intermediate uh, state. And when we applying the the deformation. In the, in the horizontal direction, then the stress S11 expect to increase with the increase in lambda 22. And for these two cases under back uh, source stress state, when we increase uh, uh, the deformation in one direction and uh, in another direction, the, the, it will generate stress or uh, increase uh, the generated stress. And uh, uh, we regard this kind of uh, phenomenon as the second Poisson effect. It could characterize the deformation coupling under a uh, backstool tension uh, state. These two, uh, these two figures shows the, the relation between the, gener the generated stress and uh, the stretch. Uh, the first figure shows uh, the generated stress in the vertical direction when stretched along the horizontal direction for the three different uh, strain energy functions. We can see that the Poisson FA is that this black curve has uh, a medium, a deep medium coupling, and uh, Poisson FB, uh, it's the, this red curve shows that it is. Uh, the model, the model B has the strongest, uh, the strongest deformation coupling, and the model C has the weakest deformation coupling. The result from the S22 and uh, uh, from the relation of S22 and uh, and uh, lambda 11 has a similar has a similar result. If we have uh, in the linear elastic his uh, linear elastic condition. And uh, this kind of relation is, will be related with uh, the C11, C, uh, C1122 and C2211 in the linear elastic constraint model. Uh, let's go back to the fitting of the uh, model to the experimental results. From this uh, second kind of Poisson effect, we can see that uh, the deformation coupling of the model A is a medium. The reason for the model A has uh, the best uh, accuracy is that uh, the Poisson FA reflects more accurately of the real coupling effect of the tissue. And the deformation coupling of model B uh, has uh, too much uh, is uh, too much strong, and the deformation coupling of the C is uh, is too is too less. Recall that uh, for back to stretch state, the two the three different models has different forms, but under the unaxial stretch in a zero direction, the three different models reduce to the same form. That means if we only consider the traditional Poisson effect, we cannot 
differ the three different the, the coupling of the three different models. And therefore, the second uh, Poisson effect may be essential for complete characterization of uh, the coupling effect for the materials has different uh, mechanical behaviors under unexo tension and bioxo state. We also compared the uh, fitting accuracy of the unified fiber distribution model A and the uh, gasser ogden hodaf model. And we can see that the model, the, uh, uh, the UFD model A with uh, four parameters is even better than the Jewish model with 12 parameters based on the uh, R square value. That means we use the less parameters obtain a better fitting per, uh, performance. And uh, if we check the, the, uh, the stress relation under the second kind of Poisson effect, this, uh, this figure shows the relation between the S22 and uh, the stretch lambda 11 for model A and uh, the, the Gasser uh, Ogden Hadaf model. Because the initial uh, value of the generated stress is uh, not the same, uh, we, uh, we normalize the relation with the initial value of the stress. So, in this figure, we can see that the deformation coupling of the uh, GH model is stronger than the model A. That may be the reason why uh, the Jewish model is not uh, as accurate as the model A. And uh, the model A may re reflect more accurately for the real coupling of the tissue. To make a summary, in this study, we start from one generalized track tensor and uh, came up with two new stream parameters and uh, further pro uh, pr uh, proposed three uh, new uh, strain functions uh, representing three new models, A and B, A, B, and C. We also performed bioxo testing of the aortic tissue and uh, obtained the bioxo stress uh, strain relation with uh, experiment, uh, experimental data by, by, uh, based on the model fitting. We uh, have the model A is better than model B, is better than model C. And the model A with four parameters is even better than the Jewish model with five parameters. And we also investigate the deformation coupling on the back tension and uh, come up with, came up with a new second kind of Poisson effect. With this uh, new second kind of Poisson effect, we explain why the model A is better, is the best. For further di uh, discussion, the consumer models are fundamental theory for biomedical problems such as uh, stress analysis. Here, the, uh, the, the, second, the second kind of Poisson effect is even more fundamental and it can uh, investigate the accuracy of the consumer model. And in this study, the unified fiber distribution model uh, can be applied to by tissues of arbitrary 2D uh, fiber distributions with a symmetry. And uh, the second kind of Poisson effect is a useful and uh, essential supplement to the traditional Poisson effect. Before I, uh, I end my talk, I would like to use uh, uh, two slides to introduce the first application of the UFD model. Actually, uh, in, uh, this work is just uh, accepted and published in this month. In this work, we developed a computational growth uh, framework based on the UFD model and uh, apply the growth framework to model the growth of the aortic root aneurysm repaired by the V-shaped surgery. For the kinematic growth approach, the deformation can be decomposed into an elastic part and a growth part. For, uh, for the elastic part, we use the UFD model to describe the mechanical behavior. For the growth part, we use the, uh, the growth evol evolution law 
to describe the growth evolution. I may not be able to introduce the details of this growth framework. And uh, uh, this, this, uh, this growth framework has been applied to model the growth of the aortic root aneurysm repaired by the v shaped surgery. We obtained the geometry at the two follow-up time points after the surgery, post one and post two from the CD data. And then we use the growth model, a uh, model uh, simulate the growth process of the, of the root aneurysm and uh, obtained a good, uh, a good match with uh, a predicted result and the, the geometry obtained from the CD data. And this work can be referred to this paper. I would like to thank uh, my advisor, Dr. Sun, Dr. Gleason, and Dr. And Dr. Lefter Redis. I also would like to thank my collaborators, uh, my undergraduate students, and our, our funding source. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Dong. Uh, so, so good research also need good questions. So now you can raise your hands or type your question to ask Dr. Dong questions. Uh, we have the first question. So actually, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Chin. Am I audible uh, by any chance? Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Hi. It was a nice presentation. I was uh, very eager to see the unified uh, fiber distribution model. Uh, I just had a question, though. Uh, in one of your slides, you showed that uh, the uh, structured tensor can be decomposed as, say, into two characteristic directions, with A0 and A0 perpendicular. Yeah. Uh, so it's in effect saying that any arbitrary distribution of say any arbitrary number of fibers can be ultimately decomposed into two perpendicular fiber distributions. Uh, for for general uh, for general case that uh, maybe not, but uh, as long as the fiber distribution with uh, one symmetric axis, we can decompose into a zero direction and a zero perpendicular direction. It has a symmetric axis in the sense that. Uh, it should have a direction of symmetry. I mean, even if the perpendicular axis is the axis of symmetry, is that enough? Uh, that is uh, that is uh, true. If we have actually, if we have one uh, symmetry axis, it will automatically has another symmetry axis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that, that makes sense. So, so in that case, it can be de uh, decomposed into the a naught and a naught perpendicular, which happen to be the axis of symmetry. Basically, the fiber distribution can be reduced into only those two directions as the characteristic directions. Yeah. Okay, now I, find, I found that interesting because it's uh, it's easy to model anisotropic materials that way. So that was my question, that's all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And the next one is the Dr. Fan Feng. Uh, uh, hi, Han. thank you for the talk. So uh, I'm not familiar with this uh, tissue uh, modeling. So I'm wondering, uh, if I understand it correctly. So you model this tissue uh, as, a, as a new hooking elastomer with a dis distribution of fibers. And mm -hmm. also the fiber distribution has kind of a uh, kind of symmetry involved there. So the distribution is like rho theta equals rho minus theta. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering, is there any uh, physical background behind this symmetry? Yeah, uh, let, let me show my slide. Here you can see uh, for this uh, bovine pericardial tissue, we have uh, one symmetry for the fiber distribution. And uh, for, the, uh, for the media layer of the aortic tissue, we also have uh, one symmetry. Actually, uh, for many of the bio tissues, uh, in human body, and uh, most of them has uh, at least one symmetry for, for the for the real tissue. So that's why we con uh, okay. con consider this with uh, uh, the symmetry condition. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks. So my second question is about uh, your uh, second Poisson's effect. So sure. we know we know that in many uh, like. Uh, uh, 
meta materials, there is kind of negative Poisson ratio thing. Yeah. What are the main differences between this this kind of meta material uh, negative Poisson ratio and and your same kind of Poisson effect? Sure. Um, get uh, a little bit confused here. That is a very good question. Uh, the, uh, the second kind of Poisson effect is uh, is uh, indeed uh, different with uh, the negative Poisson, Poisson ratio. Uh, let's first consider the traditional Poisson effect uh, here in this figure. The traditional Poisson effect is under unexal stretch. For most of the material, when you stretch in one direction and it will contract in another direction. Yes. Yeah. For the uh, negative Poisson, uh, Poisson effect, uh, it may be ex exp expand in this direction, but no matter uh, it is contract or expand, the sec the uh, in the second direction, the, uh, it is a stress free. Yes, yes. We call it it is a unexo unexo stress state, right? Right. Yes. But for the second kind of Poisson effect, uh, it is under Bachso stress state. We we just uh, fix the deformation of the second, uh, second direction. And then we stretch from the, uh, uh, then we stretch from the, the first direction. And in this case, because uh, the direction, the second direction is fixed, and then we will have stress generated in the second direction when we stretch from uh, the horizontal direction. Also, uh, so in your case, it is a, by axial stress, which determines the, the ratio between the horizontal axis and vertical axis. Do I understand correctly? I'm not sure. Uh, actually, we, we, we didn't use uh, the re, uh, any ratio uh, between the stress and the uh, strain. We uh, actually, we use the, the, gener the generated stress, the relation between the generated stress in the fixed direction and uh, the deformation uh, along the deformed direction. It is uh, the relation between this, this stress, S11, and the lambda 22 to characterize the deformation coupling, not uh, just a, a simple ratio. Okay, okay. Yeah, actually the, the main difference between the, the actually for, for, your, for, for your question, uh, no matter it is, uh, uh, it is uh, a positive Poisson, uh, Poisson ratio or negative Poisson ratio and uh, both uh, the positive and uh, negative Poisson ratio is under unexo stress state, and it is uh, uh, the traditional Poisson effect. Yes. And uh, uh, the second kind of Poisson effect can can be applied to either uh, positive Poisson ratio or negative Poisson ratio materials. It is it is just uh, under Bachso stress state. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question for me to give me the opportunity to uh, clear more of this. Okay, so because of the time limitation, so we'll move on to our second speaker. And so if you have more questions for Dr. Dong, you can keep asking afterwards. And the second 